So today we're going to talk about the book of Joel. We don't know a lot about when it was actually composed, um, but most scholars believe that it was written at some point between 539 and 333 BCE, which was also known as the Persian period. Joel was a prominent name during this period, and some of the languages, uh, language in the text, may give precedent to that time period. So the book is relatively short, only three chapters in nature, um, and there's two sections uh, within that book. The first dealing um, with a locust plague and a drought, uh, which occurs uh, in chapter 1, verse 1, through chapter 2, verse 17. Now, the, the plague of locusts and the drought are supposed to be symbolic in, um, in pointing to the fact that Israel in some way has fallen into error, has rebelled against God, and the, the plague and the drought destroy Israel's um, agriculture, there's no crops, and so this leads to a national outcry. God responds to the outcry by demanding that the people of Israel turn from their wickedness and repent. And so the people repent as they are instructed. And then in section 2, which is uh, chapter 2, verse 18, uh, through the end of the book, chapter 3, we see um, God's future blessing being promised and the restoration of Israel being expected. And so the themes in the book that you want to keep in mind, number one, the sovereignty of God. Uh, God is capable of doing the things that God wants in order to bring about God's um, desired plan. Um, the other theme, which is more prominent, is the day of the Lord, which historically has been thought of when uh, God would make the world right again, at least from the perspective of the people of Israel. And so the thought process was that Israel, who is in exile, who has um, suffered defeat at the hands of the Assyrians and the Babylonians and the Persians. Later they will suffer under the Greeks and then the Romans. Um, they, they are a people who are constantly being conquered. And so the, the idea is that the day of the Lord is when God uh, restores Israel um, as the pinnacle nation on earth that all other nations will uh, bow down to and um, and they will serve Israel. And so um, historically this has been interpreted as this great day of judgment and we can see echoes of um, expectation of the coming day of the Lord in the Gospels. Uh, the apostles are expecting um, you know, God to use Jesus to overthrow Rome, and they are anticipating this violent warrior who's going to overthrow the Romans and establish rule and peace and prosperity for Israel. Um, that never happens. And in fact, what, what, is, what is fascinating to me is that when we read the book of Acts uh, in the second chapter, when Peter is filled with the Holy Spirit, he quotes Joel. He quotes the passage referring to what will happen when the great coming day of the Lord has arrived. And Peter and the early church interpret the day of the Lord as a reference to what God has done in and through Jesus Christ, which is not violent rule or oppression, um, but is actually becoming more inclusive and drawing the nations uh, to God in the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ.